Healthy habits. You have got to simply catch them all. To catch them, that's our real test. Training them actually is our cause. Pokemon. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, my friends. Let's talk healthy habits. I feel like there's a lot of healthy habits going all around the internet. It can feel really overwhelming. I don't know about you guys, but me and overwhelm, we don't mix. As soon as something feels overwhelming, I just have a brain malfunction. I'm like, ah. So we're gonna score each of these classic viral healthy habits as a worth a try or skip on by. It's actually not gonna be skip on by, it's gonna be overrated. I just wanted to say skip on by because rhyming purposes, you know. This video is more about helping you guys prioritize, like picking the one or two changes that make the biggest difference. I wanna be upfront with you guys, I do not do most of these, but what we're looking for for worth a try is some proven benefits amongst ideally a wide, diverse population, including females as well. But a lot of these viral healthy habits aren't thoroughly researched. We're not gonna find a lot of randomized controlled trials, so we might just have to settle for low potential risks, low costs, and obviously, not going against your basic biochemistry. But that does not mean that you've got to do them. There's this big individualized aspect to health. Just because everyone's talking about something doesn't mean that it will work for you. Worth a try means worth a try, but don't feel pressured. Now overrated doesn't mean that it never ever has any use whatsoever and that it's the devil. It just means that it's not well researched and it's probably not worth blanket recommending to everyone based on the cost and risks versus potential rewards. Now caveat, if you do have individualized medical advice, that trumps everything. This video is more about that blanket advice that goes out to everyone on social media. So right here, we have our classic healthy habits. And to be honest, there's so many healthy habits around the internet, I just couldn't, there's just not enough time, okay? So we're just gonna pick them out at random and play the healthy habit lottery. Drink a gallon of water a day. Skip it. Skip it. That was easy. I like this game. <laughs> what? Individual water requirements are multifactorial and there is massive inter-individual variability, which just means that between individuals, the amount of water that they need varies a lot. And it varies based on your weight, your sex, age, your physical activity level, your diet, your health, whether or not you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding, and also things like your environment, like the temperature or the humidity. First of all, one gallon, <laughs> this is what I find funny, one gallon is different. Depends where you are. If you're in the US, it's 3.7 litres, and if you're in the rest of the world, an imperial gallon is 4.5 litres. But in either case, that's a very hearty portion. I tried it, and I felt like I was simultaneously gonna drown and pee myself. A big recent study of healthy European adults found that you hydrated women which is basically just optimally hydrated women, took in about 1.8 liters of water from fluid a day, and that's all fluids. Now, hyperhydrated women took on average 2.6 liters of water from fluid a day. Just to remind everyone, a gallon is minimum 3.7 liters. And if you're drinking a tea or coffee, you're going even above that. And you might be thinking hyperhydration. Hit me up, that's goals. And I'm just saying, wait. Wait, wait, our bodies work its ass off, work their asses off, work their collective asses off to maintain an optimal electrolyte concentration. So drinking too much water can disrupt that concentration and affect the movement of fluid through our bloodstream into our tissue cells. That's why when we look at the recommendations of major medical institutions, like the National Academy of Medicine, the NHS, and the European Food Safety Authority, they recommend about 1.8 to 2.7 liters of total fluid intake a day if you're a female in a temperate climate, like most of the US, Canada, Europe, and that's total fluid. So milk, teas, coffees, etc. So drinking water, when you're thirsty, check in your pee to see that it's a nice, healthy color. Beautiful, but a blanket one gallon rule for everyone? If you're not sure though, ask a dog. Always ask a dog. This one's an overrated for me. Journaling. 
definitely in right now. Journaling is probably the healthy habit of our time. Now there is some randomized controlled data to support the benefits of journaling in managing common mental health symptoms for help with mental distress and anxiety. And there is some early research into the use of expressive open writing about traumatic events. So not so much like the day-to-day -day mundane kind of stuff, but more like emotional experiences. Given that there seems to be low risks around journaling, it's pretty much the perfect worth a try. But the effect sizes, which is basically how large the scale of improvement is, seems to be low to moderate in these tests. So it's definitely not a replacement for medical and professional help. So if there's something you need qualified help with, please, please, please speak up. Like therapy changed me. You might not find the perfect therapist the first time you go, but once you found that person, Honestly, it changed me. It made such a difference. So I do really recommend it. Now, I do just want us to remember that journaling being worth a try still doesn't mean that it's right for you. Journaling isn't right for me. <laughs> I've tried it a few times. I personally feel like when I'm journaling, I lose perspective of the bigger picture. Journaling puts me at the center of my universe. And I've said this before, and I just don't think that's helpful for me. So this is one of those daily healthy habits you should be doing that I see in almost every healthy habit TikTok post and YouTube video. And I don't think it's fair to say that you should be doing it. I'm putting it in worth a try because you might find it helpful, but if you don't, then that's completely fine. My hands are sweating, so it's rubbing off the ink on my hands. Get your healthy habits, step right up. 10,000 steps. We've all heard of 10,000 steps, and if we haven't tried it ourselves, we all know someone that's tried 10,000 steps. So that means, given how popular it is, it must be grounded in science, right? Well, if you consider marketing a science, you'd be right. Man Bokai. <laughs> Bear with me, okay? This is a Japanese word. It will make sense in a second. Mampokai. I know I'm pronouncing this wrong to my Japanese friends. I'm really sorry. In Japanese, they have a word mampo, which means 10,000 steps. We don't have a word for 10,000 steps, but they do in Japan. Now, in the 60s, a Japanese company called Yamasa created Mampokai, which is a 10,000 step meter. Basically, it was just a device that counted 10,000 steps. Once you got to 10,000 steps, it would reset. That's all it could do is just count to 10,000 steps and then reset. So 10,000 started as this arbitrary, simple number. I think it just sounded like a big number, but also was kind of attainable enough that just spread very quickly. And that doesn't prove that it's good or bad. It just means we have to wipe the slate clean and actually look to see whether 10,000 steps is a scientifically significant number. Now, big observational studies do find an association between walking more and a reduced incidence of cardiovascular disease and death. So there is data to support the idea that if you walk more, you're taking care of your health. From what we can tell, the relationship seems to be non-linear. So adding an extra thousand steps a day and going from 2000 steps to 3,000 steps a day on average would have more of an effect on health risks than going from 8,000 to 9,000 steps a day. I actually tracked my steps for a day because I've never done it before. I chucked on Mario's Apple Watch and I did like a workout and then most of the day I was sitting. It's like a very average day for me. Give me the rundown for the end of the day. So I've got 7,185 steps. That was a workout day plus a day of work. Oh, I can't wait to take this off. Ah. Oh. Freedom from the analytics at last. <laughs> I always want to encourage you to move in a way that you enjoy. <laughs> I will always say that, always and forever. I just think it can be important not to get too obsessive. I've known a lot of people who are the perfectionist type, like I am, who get really hung up if they're not actually hitting those 10,000 steps. And it becomes less of a nice thing to do and more of a need. Moving is amazing. If you get 10,000 steps a day, great work. If you get 8,000 steps a day, great work. But if you're getting hung up on this number of 10,000 steps a day, just zoom out. Health is about long-term averages. So in general, getting that movement in, and it can be steps, but it also can be like resistance training or Pilates or cycling, whatever it is, it's always worth a try for me. But if it's specifically 10,000 steps as a be all and end all, I'm gonna have to say it's overrated. Cleaning the old, you know what I'm saying. Don't make me say it. YouTube already demonetizes me, okay? Vahina, cleaning the 
Now this is not one of those classic healthy habits you typically see in a TikTok video or a healthy habits video on YouTube. I'll give you that. But it is something that I think people do regularly and also something that I've wanted to touch on for a while, but I never thought it was quite appropriate in like a what I in a day, you know? Okay, now we're having lunch. Next I'm gonna clean my vagina. So there's just a little bit of science I wanted to touch on around this subject. So some cleansing products can alter the pH or microbiota that is needed for protection against infection. That's why where you can, you wanna be sticking to hypoallergenic products, soap-free products, products that have a lower pH. So about pH 4.2 to 5.6 is a really good place to start gentle cleansers and cleansing gently as well. You don't want to be applying too much vigor, you know? So generic body washes, shower gels or soaps might not be the best thing. Bar soaps, for example, tend to have a higher alkaline pH. And also flowing water, like showering is often recommended by obstetricians and gynecologists over taking a bath. Now vaginal douching, which is the process of cleaning the inside of your vagina to try and properly clean the vagina and get rid of all odors has pretty clearly been shown to actually increase the risk of disease and endometriosis. So gynecologists really discourage us from doing it. I've made that mistake before. I was 15 years old and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean myself. And I went too far and I was scratching for about a month. So don't do what I did. If you're not sure about products or how to clean or smells, just go and trust your doctor. For most people, they generally say, give it a light touch. Vaginas are very good at cleaning themselves. And also, I've just been demonetized for the last minute and a half. So, thumbs up from me. <sighs> Multivis. Multivitamins, where do we start? Um, the supplement industry, so I'm talking macronutrients and micronutrients, is a huge industry and insanely profitable. And the biggest sponsorship offers I've seen in the health and fitness industry since I've been making YouTube videos have been in supplement companies because the profit margins are just so damn big. Now that doesn't prove or disprove anything about their efficacy. I'm just saying that seeing them constantly is not a sign that they work just a sign that they're insanely profitable. Now it's estimated that about 30 to 40% of adults in the US regularly take a multivitamin. If we have so much research on how a micronutrient rich diet impacts our health and life expectancy, and it's been building over time for decades and decades, how is it that leading health institutions like Harvard School of Public Health, the NHS and the Mayo Clinic don't glowingly recommend taking a multivitamin regularly? Surely it's like an easy win. And the answer is that repeatedly, over years and years of research on hundreds of thousands of women, people taking multivitamin supplements regularly don't seem to be showing any signs of improved health. A leading theory about why that is, is that vitamins and minerals, they don't work independently. They work synergistically with other molecules in your food that enable their proper absorption. And so that's why Harvard School of Public Health say that a multivitamin cannot in any way replace a healthful, well-balanced diet. And so using them is more about filling particular nutritional gaps that your diet or your environment can't give you. But I feel like if I haven't convinced you and you're still like, I'm gonna take that multivit. Then medical institutions regularly advise you take a multivitamin that is 100% of your recommended daily allowance rather than mega doses. And you know what I'm talking about. You look at the side of the packet and it's like 3000% recommended daily allowance of vitamin C. And that's because research shows that regularly mega dosing can be toxic in itself. Like too much of anything is not good for us, even the good stuff. Now, I'm not gonna say whether this one is a worth a try or overrated. I just want you guys to have the same info that I have. If you feel unsure, definitely go and see a doctor. Hey doc, skip on by or worth a try. Lemon water. I'm gonna be going against the lemon industry here. For real though, I've heard lemon water feels like the elixir of life. I've heard it be beneficial for so many things. Digestion, bloating, metabolism, weight loss, clear skin, mental clarity, immunity. Something about it being in the morning as well just ramps up the promises. We've all seen the classic, the cute like lemon shop, you know? If we take digestion for example, lemon water doesn't have any fiber. It doesn't, it's not a diuretic. The acidity isn't really helping because our stomach is already at pH 2, which is way more acidic 
than the lemon water you'd be drinking. And we also don't have any trials that show that it improves general nutrient absorption. We have got studies that show vitamin C helps with iron absorption if that's what people mean, but I never see people give that as a reason. But it is a good thing. Let's talk about weight loss. It has nothing to do with your metabolism. The only debate that we're having is whether consuming water before a meal reduces the amount of energy that you take in in that meal. But that debate is about water consumption not the lemon. And to be honest, we don't have high quality, long-term interventional studies to clear that debate right now. Now, in terms of immunity and skin health, vitamin C does seem to have a positive effect. So you wanna be hitting your recommended daily allowance of about 60 to 80 milligrams of vitamin C a day. And a little slice of lemon is very cute, but it's only about three to five milligrams of vitamin C. So if you really want the benefits, chop that lemon in half, squeeze it as hard as you can, so you're getting about 15 to 25 milligrams of vitamin C. What I'm saying is, it's worth a try and also overrated. I think it's overrated because people have promised the world from it, but then also there's not many downsides and also vitamin C is good. If you don't like lemons though, then skip it. Skincare. I feel like no healthy habits video is complete without a montage of a facial wash and an exfoliating. But in all seriousness, like I, I struggled with my skin a lot. When I was like a teenager at high school, I didn't really, I mean, I had the occasional friend that would pop up and say hi, but it was never anything that I really worried about too much. And then as soon as I graduated from uni, my skin just went into overdrive. Like I had full blown adult acne and I know what it feels like to be so self-conscious about your skin. Like I used to go around with my hair just drooping over my face because I, I just felt so self-conscious. I spent so much money on products that just didn't work. The only time I saw consistent change was when I started seeing a dermatologist. So now I actually have two prescription creams for acne and I'm on spironolactone, which is medication for acne. And that's really the biggest change I've ever seen in my skin. I think there's always aspects of the beauty industry that I think are gonna be overrated, but finding a consistent skin routine that works for you definitely worth a try but don't lose faith like for me with my skin it did actually take a long time for me to actually see the benefits of the medication i was on but keep pushing through and always remember also you're beautiful we see you for who you are and what you put out into the world that's who we see you for and that's always going to be beautiful ping pong gods we ask you to choose our healthy habits i know this isn't technically part of your jurisdiction i just give me a sign social media detox this one actually makes me really happy. I feel like more and more people discussing healthy habits and making videos are becoming more aware of the impact social media has on their mental health. A few years back, trying to talk about this or trying to make content around it, it just wasn't quite hitting. Like people didn't really want to hear it, to be honest. So I stopped focusing on that and just focused on other areas where I felt like I could help. People do seem to be way more open to the conversation now. And there is research on social media suggesting that it plays a negative role in our mental health, especially in terms of anxiety, depression, and self-esteem. I think it's just important to be intentional and know that about yourself. So run that check. Like if you use social media and you realize that whilst you're using it or after you're using it, you feel bad, then maybe you can make some cuts. Or if you feel nothing at all, then at least you know. But I definitely think that running that check is worth a try. I use it about three to four hours a week. Half of that will be replying, either on YouTube or on Instagram. And then the other half is just, I'll watch some YouTube videos, I'll, be on Instagram a little bit. I never touch TikTok. Yeah, I noticed that if I spend too long on it, I do not feel good. And that, my friends, is our healthy habits review. It's like a graduation day. Oh shit, oh, I have really bad coordination. <laughs> okay, don't do that. Right, well, we graduated. So I love you guys. <laughs> Please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos. And I love you, always. Bye.